Okay, yeah, but a bit of the introduction about myself. My name is Iswana, uh, Iswana Ayub. Uh, I am one of the cybersecurity awareness trainer here at Brewster. Okay, here are some of my credentials, mostly cybersecurity related uh, and mostly awareness related. So some of my experience would be I go from school to school and also organizations and also corporates. And basically I give awareness talks. Okay. So with me today, we have uh, Farid, uh, we also have Khadija, and also Nomi, all right? So all the questions you ask later in the Q&A chat box, uh, they, will, uh, they will help um, uh, answer the questions. Okay. So uh, a bit of an introduction about my workplace as well. Um, uh, Cybersecurity Brunei. Uh, it has uh, three services, three core services, which is uh, the first one, which is Brucid. I'm sure you guys have heard of Brucid, Brunei Computer Emergency Response Team. And then we also have the National Digital Forensics Laboratory. So basically uh, what NDFL is all about, uh, let's say, for example, you have um, a hard drive that is broken and you need help uh, salvage all those important uh, documents or files, you can... Uh, uh, the the forest, forensics team can help out with that. And we also have the Cyber Watch Center. All right, so this is our agenda for today. Uh, we have the cyber attacks uh, are everywhere. So, uh, and then the, followed by um, the types of cyber attacks. And then we also share you the tips on uh, secure cyber experience and what can you report to Bruce and followed by question and answer session. Of course, you don't have to wait until the end of the session, yeah? You can actually uh, ask the questions now, okay? And uh, there's uh, facilitators who can assist you with that one. All right, so next one. Okay, cyber attacks are everywhere. Okay, so I'm gonna show you a, not a slide, sorry. I'm gonna show you this one, All right. Cyber attacks are everywhere. So as you can see, this is a real time map about cyber threats, okay? We have um, this one. So at the moment, there's someone from Canada being attacked and then United St States is attacking somewhere in Poland. Uh, this is uh, in terms of cyber threats, yeah? So the hackers are like attacking any countries at the moment, all right? And yeah, so as you, as you can see here, just now Australia to Hong Kong. So basically the threats are happening at the moment, even as we speak, okay? So this is why it is important for us to learn about the different types of cyber attacks, right? So let me move that one. All right, uh, of course you can see, apart from the website I just showed you, you can also go to this website and see uh, the threat map, all right? It shows you the threats uh, real time, okay? Usually they show you in the form of a country because it's a lot easier to see it that way. Uh, but most of the time, it's just uh, a small scale, like uh, corporates being attacked or even the, the homes being attacked, something like that, okay? So let's proceed to the next one. So the importance of cybersecurity awareness. So why do we need to learn about all of this? Why do we need to learn about the types of cyber threats, cyber attacks? Well, this is because about 90% of cyber, cyber data breaches are caused by human error, all right? Anyone can be a victim of these cyber threats, especially these cyber, cyber data breaches, okay? And it doesn't matter who you are, you know, you could be a government official or you could be a celebrity or even just a normal person, you can still be uh, under cyber threats or cyber attacks. So most of the time it's caused by human error itself. All right, so this is why we need to learn about all of this. So what cyber attacks you should be aware of? Okay, so there are different types of cyber attacks. So let me show you the first, oh, let me show you the types, yeah? There's actually a lot, 
All right. But today we're just going to focus uh, some, uh, this one, two, three, four, five. Three, four, five. Uh, these five attacks, which is quite popular in Brunei, actually. But <laughs> actually, there's a lot, yeah. So these uh, these one, five attacks is quite popular. So we're gonna uh, focus on that one today. Of course, if you have any questions, uh, don't forget to uh, don't, do not hesitate to ask on the Q and A chat box, and the facilitators can assist you. And if we have times time to extend, I can also uh, answer some of the questions. <laughs> Right. So the first one is bad software, software yang jahat, right? So allow me to uh, maybe present this in both Malay and English, yeah? So, uh, so the bad software, basically, uh, we, first and foremost, we need to learn what is software, apa kan software ni? So uh, to make it simple, software is basically something that we install to our devices. When I say devices, um, something like uh, your laptop or even your smartphone. So that is devices. Huh? So whatever you install to your devices, that is actually considered as a software. So if you install it to your laptop or your computer, we call it software. If you install it to your app, uh, sorry, if you install it to your smartphone, we call it as applications or apps for short. Okay. So examples of uh, software is uh, Microsoft Word that is considered as a software. Google Chrome is a web browser, but still it's an application or a software, right? iTunes, even Angry Bird, that is a, an, an app, okay? A, a gaming app. Still, gaming app is still a software. It's still something that you need to install to your devices. Candy Crush, antivirus, again, if you install it, then it's considered as a software. Even Facebook app or YouTube app, right? So that is a definition of software. But what is bad software? So bad software is basically something that you install to your devices, but it has the intention of something, uh, with, uh, it has bad intention basically, all right? So let's learn about that one. Okay, so next slide. All right, so bad software, there are many of them, okay? The first one is malware, short for malicious software. As you notice, if you notice, let me, I don't know if I can annotate. Oh, I can. All right. Where, 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 where. Okay. All these, they are software. Okay. Software. But what makes them so different is that the term in front of it. Okay. I'm just going to circle that. Okay. So malicious software. If you install, accidentally install malicious software, to your devices, okay? When I say devices, computer or smartphone, huh? if you inst uh, accidentally install them to your devices, the intention of malware is to corrupt the computer system, okay? Uh, in another word, in Malay, merusakkan our computer, all right? Merusakkan sistem kita ni, all right? So example of uh, malware would be uh, virus, worm, and also trojan. Okay, so the difference between virus and worm is uh, it's, it's, it has the same purpose, okay? If you install, uh, if, it's, if it gets to your devices, it will uh, corrupt your system. But the difference is that virus requires human to click on it, okay? As for worm, it, it doesn't uh, require human to click on it. It will automatically infect your computer. All right, now, next, let's learn about spyware, which is in the name itself. It's the purpose is to spy on us, okay? It's a spying software. So basically the purpose is to monitor our activities and also collect our information, all right? If we install it to our devices, let's say we go online shopping, it requires our credit card. Spyware can actually, um, what do you call this? Copy our credit card number. So that's, that is an example of spyware. As for adware, it's an advertisement software. All right, so example of adware is like pop-ups, which is uh, common, common actually in our devices these days. Yeah, so that is an example of adware. So these are some of the attacks and the, the worst of it all, I think, is ransomware. Okay, ransomware is, again, it's in the name. It's uh, basically, if you install it to your devices, okay, it will lock all your files. And then the only way for you to get your files back is for you to pay the hacker. And usually these hackers, they want uh, the ransom payment in the form of Bitcoin. 
you know, and as you can see, Bitcoin is not getting any cheaper these days, right? So that is ransomware. Uh, it's uh, if you are uh, if you ever encountered ransomware, we actually don't recommend you to uh, pay the hackers. Yeah, actually, the only way for you to get back all your files, okay, is through backups. We don't recommend you. We don't encourage you to pay these hackers. Why? Well, first, uh, hacker and you. If you pay them, they always want something more. All right. So let's say hey, I want one Bitcoin. You pay me one Bitcoin. So you paid one Bitcoin. And then the next day, the hacker will ask again, okay, give me two Bitcoin, then I'll give you the key. So they will keep on asking for more. All right. And then uh, the, uh, there are some hacker, um, this one case, uh, the person paid the hacker. However, uh, after that, they never heard anything from the hacker again. All right. So uh, Again, we do not recommend or we do not encourage you to pay these hackers. Yeah, the only way for you to get it back, uh, the best practice is through backups. Okay, so let me clear all that. All right, so let's proceed to the next one. Oh, sorry. Let's proceed to the next one. Okay, so how can we get malware or spyware or any other bad software? How can, did it get into our devices? Okay, first and foremost, usually uh, it's because of the things that we download. Okay, we download suspicious looking software or applications or even files. So, daripada barang-barang yang kami download. Uh, the next one is we, uh, we receive email and usually it's, it's a spam email and it has attachment. So, we tend to open the attachment without scanning it. First. So that's how we can get malware. Okay. And then followed by visiting malicious software. So visiting malicious software, uh, you can get malware from that one. You know, you just browse the website and then in the background, it downloads the all those um, spyware or malware in the background. Okay. So that is how you can get it. And uh, another one is there's actually many ways you can get it, but uh, these are the common ones. Again, the, another one is downloading files from file sharing or programs. Uh, as for this one, uh, I'm sure you guys are familiar with Torrent. Uh, back in my day, I used to download, when I was a, like a teenager, uh, I used to download music through LimeWire. Okay, I don't know if any of you guys remember that. But uh, these days, uh, the most popular file sharing program is uh, Torrent. Now, people, they usually... Um, they usually download movies. Usually, uh, uh, if I'm not mistaken, I, I don't use Torrent, by the way. Uh, some people I heard, they download K-drama, K-drama uh, using Torrent. So uh, the thing about this type of file sharing program is that, uh, let's say um, you thought it was a movie, okay? You thought it was a K-drama, yeah? When you download it, it looks like a movie, but when you click it, apparently it's a malware. So that's how you can get uh, the malware or any other bad software, okay? Now, next one. So what is the symptoms of uh, this, uh, uh, your devices is actually having a bad software or malware or spyware, ransomware like that? Well, not ransomware. Uh, oh, well, for this one, okay, as for symptoms for malware, okay, you're starting to receive unfamiliar messages or notifications. Okay, you never install anything like you never install that kind of software, but however, you keep on um, receiving uh, notifications from that software. So it's that's one of the example. So another one is your device is performing slowly despite having this this high specification. Let's say, for example, you have a laptop and the gigabyte RAM is around 32 gigabyte. Okay, you only use it for Facebook, but however, it's really, really slow. So that could be one of the signs that uh, your device is infected with malware. And then, of course, the next one is your device keeps on crashing, right? And again, uh, uh, one of the uh, symptoms is that uh, you keep on having modified or deleted files, right? So for example, your file name is ABC, okay? The next time you open that file, suddenly it's renamed to like uh, XYZ. Okay, so that's uh, one of the examples. Okay, how do you stop from having bad software? All right, so the first one is uh, try not to uh, click on suspicious links. 
Okay, when you receive, uh, especially through spam emails, they always try to um, trick you like, oh, there's a sale at this shop. Click on this link. Uh, it will bring you to the shop with discount. So try to be suspicious. Uh, try not to click on suspicious link. And then, of course, followed by uh, you need to update your operating system. Okay, operating system and uses it uses most uh, up to date uh, security updates. And don't forget to update your firewall. Okay, updating uh, your firewall is a of course is a great idea. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, if you're on Windows, uh, the firewall is often um, enabled automatically. Okay. So make sure uh, here are some of the advices how we can uh, stop the bad software. All right, next slide. Okay, so here are some of the ways uh, you can, it doesn't prevent malware or bad software, but uh, it helps to reduce the risk of being a victim of this uh, bad software, yeah? So first, uh, you can cover your webcam. Looks like this one. Uh, looks like this one. Okay, webcam cover. I th I think I saw this uh, at the mall ground floor. Ground floor is like one of those shops there. Maybe you can give it a visit. Okay, I'm not promoting, but I just saw. I just uh, share what I saw. And then, um, uh, if you're on a budget, okay, don't worry about it. There's also an alternative. You can use this one. Okay, why why this? Some people use um, sticky pad, notepad, but I don't prefer that one because uh, it makes my webcam sticky if you peel it off. But I like uh, plaster in particular is because uh, the middle part it has a sponge, so it doesn't make uh, the glass sticky, right? So of course, um, there's also another one. Uh, you can there's this tiny one. I've never seen it in at shops actually, but um, yeah. You can also use this for your phones. Okay. Let me hold on. All right. So let's proceed to the next one. So earlier we learned about bad software. So that's one of the cyber threats or cyber attacks. The next one is uh, it's password attack. Okay. So here you go. Can you swashy tips? Oh, I'm reading it. Okay, someone suggested uh, you can use washi tapes. <laughs> yeah, I uh, yeah, you can you guys can use washi tapes as well. <laughs> it's uh, it's pretty in design. Thank you for your suggestion, Kar Kartika. All right. Okay, so let's talk about password attacks. Yeah. So for password attacks, uh, there are many ways people can attack our password. All right. So uh, the first one is brute force attack, uh, followed by dictionary attack, and then followed by keylogger attack, and also credential stuff stuffing. So uh, I'm gonna talk about that uh, further again, yeah, in the next few slides. So for this one, okay, brute brute force attack. Okay, um, I'm not sure if you guys uh, know this kunci manga, and then it has like one, two, three. You just need to like scroll then until you get the right number. So uh, password brute force attack is using that concept. So it will keep on guessing your number. So um, basically, how do you prevent brute force attack? Is usually uh, make sure your password is long. Okay, your password can still be cracked, but uh, because it's long, so and it's using the brute force method, so it will take a long time for them to crack it. And then the next one is use complex password, and followed by, if possible, if they manage to crack your password, uh, make sure you are protected by multi-factor authentication or uh, two-factor authentication. So basically, is you you log into your account using your password, followed by uh, you know receiving a pin code uh, through SMS. So that is brute force attack. So that is how you prevent it, yeah? And then followed by the next one, which is dictionary attack. So a dictionary attack, uh, basically, uh, let's say your password is something simple, like Apple, Apple123, A-P-P-L-E-123. So Apple, that word is actually in the dictionary, right? And 123 is like um, really easy. So like, uh, let's take a look at the slide here. Okay, see, 
uh, dictionary attack, let's say, um, they kept on, basically, they kept on trying, uh, guessing your password using dictionary words, okay? So the, the password is not Apple, it's not Blueberry, it's not Justin Bieber, apparently the password is secret. So that's, uh, that's, um, that's his, uh, what do you call this? That is a dictionary attack, okay? Now, uh, how do you prevent dictionary attack? Is basically make sure your password uh, doesn't use uh, the word uh, dictionary word, basically. And then uh, consider investing in a password manager. Okay, uh, password manager. There's a lot of questions about it. Is it safe? Uh, is it not safe? Well, um, of course, password manager is very convenient, especially for us with um, multiple accounts and. There's no way I can remember all of my passwords, right? So, um, however, it comes with a risk, okay? Once your password manager is compromised, like one password is compromised, all your, all your account can be compromised. So, it comes with a risk, okay? So, you need to use it responsibly. Now, next one. How can people, uh, this is still, we're still talking about password attack, yeah? So, basically, key loggers. So keyloggers, like I mentioned, uh, is, is actually another form of spyware, okay? So there's a, what do you call this? Uh, yeah, so there's a hot, oh, that, all right. So basically, uh, whatever you type on your computer, it is actually being captured, okay? So let's say you type your password, um, ABC123, so it's actually being captured and then it is being sent to the hacker. So that is another way of password attack. Another one is credential stuffing. Credential stuffing is basically, um, let's say two years ago, your password is ABC123. Again, I'm gonna use that as an example. It's the worst password ever, but let's try that, uh, use that as, a, as an example, yeah? So let's say if two years ago, your password, it was ABC123, okay? But this year, you change it to XYZ456. And then this hacker, they found out your old password, okay? So they try to hack into your account, but your account is already, uh, your account already changed the password. So um, basically reusing your old password. So that is credential stuffing. So these hackers, they found out your old password, and then they try to use it on all your accounts. So this is why this this is why it is important for you to change your password regularly. All right, so that hackers cannot use your old password against you. Okay, so next one. Okay, so uh, how do we stop password attacks? Uh, of course, the first one is uh, you, uh, you need to update your password, yeah? You don't want to have another case of credential stuffing. So uh, make sure your password is regularly updated. So update your password. And it shouldn't be the same. So if your Facebook, the password is ABC123, your Twitter password should be XYZ456, okay? And then try to use alphanumeric characters. All right, um, alphanumeric is basically a combination of uh, alphabets and also numbers. And if you could add in symbols, that would be great as well. And then uh, don't forget to enable multi-factor authentication or two-factor authentication on your uh, social media or any other accounts, especially your email, okay? It is basically an added layer of security. So if a hacker managed to get your password, they still cannot get into your um, account because they don't have access to your phone to read the pin code, SMS pin code, yeah? So um, again, uh, you guys might wanna look into passphrase, okay? So passphrase is basically, um, it's another form of password, okay? But it's a lot easier to remember. So let me try to give you uh, an example. Uh, right. Okay, let's try. I'll just use a simple example, yeah? Traditional password, I'll make the font a bit bigger, okay? So that uh, we can 
we easily read it. Okay. So traditional password, um, for example, uh, I will come up with a, a strong password, yeah? Um, let me get an idea. All right, think this is the traditional password, like combination of uh, alpha, uh, capital letters, small letters, and then it has uh, numbers, and then I'll put symbols, okay? Sink, kitchen, because I can see the kitchen from here. So <laughs> I'll just use this an example, yeah? So let's say, for example, this is my password, and then I'll add um, today's date. It's a random date, okay? We do not recommend you to put your birth date as a password, but I'll just pick today's date, 11.3. Okay, this is the traditional password. Traditional password. With passphrase, okay, which is the latest uh, recommended type of password, okay? And it's easier to remember. Uh, passphrase. So basically, um, something like, uh, something that we can remember easily. So uh, in this case, uh, let me use um, an example. Uh, okay, uh, song lyrics. It's easier to remember, right? So let me use uh, Selamat Hari Raya song. I don't know. <laughs> so you can actually use passphrase. Passphrase, it has, you can use space, okay? So selama hari raya, maybe I can add um, hari kebangsaan date to Pulitika February, okay? So um, if I wanna spice it up, I can add, even add symbols or, I, and I have kept the letters, yeah? So let's try this one. So let's try this one. Selamat Hari Raya, 232. Uh, so I use this uh, website to find out uh, how secure is my password, like how long my password can be cracked. So let's try Sing Kitchen 113, right? So if I enter that, it will take around 200 million years to crack it, which is not bad, okay? Uh, however, um, hold on, that is the traditional password. So let's try the passphrase, 200 million years, okay. So let's try this one, 360 years. So do you see the difference? Earlier, it was like true 200 million years. Now I use the passphrase, which is easier to remember actually, um, which is it took only like around 360 sextillion years. Uh, I'm not sure how many zeros is that. Hopefully some part lah, huh? I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, so this is why we recommend you to use passphrase. It's a lot easier to remember. Uh, you can actually learn more about that uh, online. Uh, you just type on Google passphrase. There are many ways to, um, there are many ways to uh, to create passphrase actually, and it's really easy to remember. It's, uh, and it's good for you to memorize it, right? Without having to like, what do you call this? Um, relying on password manager. Okay, so let's move that one. Let's proceed to our next slide. Hold on. All right, so let's proceed to our next slide which is the drive-by download. Okay, uh, I'm, I, earlier I showed you uh, one of the ways that people can, uh, what do you call this, can get malware or bad software is by visiting malicious website. So basically drive-by download is um, you go into this website, all right? It's basically going to a website and then something is being downloaded in the background and you don't even know. Okay, and then apparently that something is um, is a malware, something that can infect your computer, or it could be a spyware which can spy on you. Okay, so that is one of the attacks, right? It's drive-by download. And then 
uh, drive-by download, how does it work? So uh, usually um, this user, it click, uh, this person clicks on a link, all right? And then it is being direct, redirected to a malicious website. And there at that malicious website, malware is automatically downloaded to a user's computer and that person don't even know, all right? So that is one of the attacks. Okay, so hold on. Let's try this one. Oh, okay, so let's uh, proceed to the next one. All right, so one of the attacks is uh, phishing, okay? So let's talk about phishing. Phishing is actually quite, um, I'm sure a lot of people have heard about phishing, okay? So uh, let's talk about it because I, we need to hear it, Bruce said, phishing is actually one of the most common reported problems. So we need to like re be repetitive about it and like emphasize about this, uh, the, the dangers of phishing over and over again, okay? So phishing basically is through an email, okay? So uh, for example, this person, okay, let's read the slide here. This person, uh, the person's name is Abdullah, okay? And then this person's, the, this person punya bank is ABC Bank. And then this ABC Bank, okay, I'm um, sorry. Uh, this, uh, what do you call this? Um, this fake ABC Bank, okay? Like this scammer uh, set up this account, okay? No reply the ABC Bank at gmail.com, okay? G using at gmail.com for a bank is already a red flag, okay? The bank should be, you know, shouldn't be using Gmail email, right? So, yeah. So now, this person, Abdullah, received an email from, uh, from ABC123, okay? Uh, sorry, ABC. Um, this person received email from ABC Bank, yeah? And then uh, this in this letter, it says, Dear customer, your ABC Bank account profile will expire by today. And then click on the link below to extend your deadline. Uh, abcbank.com, and then it says here, ABC Bank. Okay, this person, it says here, first they make us panic. It says here, uh, it's urgent. So it requires our attention, all right? And then they said, they also give a deadline. Again, it will make us panic. It says, oh no, I need to get it done by today. And then in, they also give you a link which it looks like the original bank's link, but it's actually not, okay? Because this is a phishing link. So let's, uh, let's clear it all, okay. Let me share you how it works. Okay, so this person, it clicks on this, um, it clicks on this link, okay? And then it is being brought to this website. So it looks like ABC, ABC Bank is a made up bank, by the way. So it, probably to that person, to the victim, uh, it looks like ABC Bank's uh, website, okay? So Abdullah, enter the username, enter the password, okay? And if you take a look here, the password is long, so it should be secure, right? However, because this is a phishing link, okay? Uh, doesn't matter how strong is your password, all right? So, <laughs> so this person clicks Submit, all right? Click on submit, and then by right, okay, this username and password should go to a legitimate server, which is the ABC Bank server. However, because this is from a phishing email, okay, this username and password, it goes to the hacker server. And earlier, it showed, it, the person click on ABC Bank, right? But now, it changes the URL to XYZ Bank, right? So this is basically the hacker server. So that is how it works. So all the username and the password, it goes to the hacker server, right? So that is how phishing works. All right. So uh, here is an example. So um, this was back in 2017, even though this was like years ago, but it is still relevant up until today. And we still use this screenshot actually. So uh, for this one, uh, one of our colleague, uh, she received this email. Uh, it looks like Dropbox. She was about to click on it, but then she remembers that she doesn't have a Dropbox under this uh, company, you know, company email. 
uh, so she forwarded this to us and then we took a look and then uh, at the time uh, we were using our phone and if you use your phone okay you can uh, what do you call this you can click on this okay lama lama you click on it uh, for a long time and then this will appear okay you click on it for a long time this will appear okay and you can see the website the real website right it's yans Fargo.com slash au drop uh, slash dropbox.htm. So it's not from dot dropbox.com. It's from a, a, a different uh, website altogether. Okay. So that is how phishing works. So for a second, you thought it was from Dropbox, but when you check on the link, it's from a different website itself. Okay. So that is uh, again. Uh, oh, yeah. So uh, again, this one, again, 2017, again, uh, happened uh, here locally in Brunei. So basically, Thai customer, uh, they received this email, okay, uh, saying that uh, they are required to do something about their uh, email, all right? So they click on, it says here, view your message. So this, uh, of course, the victim, they will click on this message, and then it will bring them to this website. It will bring them to this website okay it looks like type website but actually this is a phishing website okay so let's compare it with the original website okay this is the real one the front one is the real one the real type website back in 2017 and then the back one is the fake one okay it doesn't have that much of a difference right right <laughs> so imagine Imagine, yeah, so you enter your uh, user ID here, you enter your password here, and then you click login. All those details, it goes to this website, which is not even type website, all right? Uh, I'm not sure if you guys can see it, but it's, uh, it's icgs.co.in. .in is usually, if, I think it's from in India, yeah? So .in is from India. So let's take a look. Uh, and then let me clear all the points. Okay. And so this is the real website. So it's tib.type.com.bn.bn is from Brunei. Okay. And it has HTTPS. This one doesn't have HTTPS. Remember, by right, any online banking or any uh, e-commerce website, they should have, uh, by standard, yeah, by standard, they should have um, HTTPS, okay? And the real one has a padlock and the fake one doesn't have a padlock, okay? So you need to double check on that one. Okay, okay so let's proceed to the next one. So I hope that one clears out, okay? All right, so we have also have another example, which is, uh, again, this is my bank. Uh, the, the name here is my bank, Maybank, sorry, Maybank. However, the one emailing is vendorbuilt.edu. .edu is usually associated to uh, educational institution. So why would educational institution email you, okay, especially about banking details? And then this person asked to click on this one, so when you click on that one, it will bring you to this kind of website. Okay. So it's Maybank. However, the name here is it doesn't have anything to do with Maybank at all. So, uh, so and also it doesn't have uh, the HTTPS. Okay. And then again, we also have another example. Okay, RHB Bank. Again, the email has .edu in it. So why would educational institution would want to email you about your banking details? So you need to think about this one, yeah? And then, of course, it says there uh, to click on that site to renew or something. And then it brought to this website, okay? It looks like uh, RHB Bank. However, uh, however the, the link has nothing to do with RHB at all, okay? So when you click on an email, okay, uh, sorry, when you click on a link, you need to double check on the email, all right? So that's uh, the end of the example for phishing. 
So earlier we learned about bad software, password attack, um, and also uh, drive-by downloads, phishing. And we proceed to the last, uh, last but not least, cyber threats happening here in Brunei. Okay. So here, business email compromise. Uh, this is actually quite common if you are uh, in a working environment or a corporate environment, especially if you work for a finance department. All right. Uh, so basically, okay, business email compromise is the impersonation of executive or business contact in order to obtain transfer of fund or sensitive information. So basically, uh, to make it simple, all right, uh, business email compromise. Okay, let's say, for example, you work for finance department. Okay, I'm, I'm not quite sure uh, with the role about uh, with uh, at finance department, but basically you, you are the one who handling the money. Okay, so if uh, you're the one who released all the funds, okay, so that's, for example, that is your role. And then suddenly you receive an email, okay, an email from your CEO or managing director, okay, basically big boss saying that, hello, uh, can you transfer this amount of money to this account? And then, of course, uh, most people, they will feel afraid, okay, oh, the CEO emailed me and uh, want me to transfer this amount of money. So you transfer that amount of money to that account. But however, apparently that person emailing you, emailing you is not your CEO at all. Okay, It's just a hacker uh, impersonating your CEO or your managing director. Okay, So it's basically email spoofing. So um, like this one, you thought it's from Bill Gates. Okay, this one is a fake email. Hold on. All right. So, uh, so how does BEC work? Okay, so that is a hacker or a scammer. This scammer set up their own bank account. Okay, or uh, I'm not sure if you guys are familiar, but um, there, if you go on social media, there's always this advertisement saying asking that um, Mari sewa bank, siapa mau sewakan banknya, something like that. So instead of uh, setting up their own bank account, this scammer they can actually rent out orang lain punya bank account. Okay, which is quite common if you go on Facebook or Instagram, actually. Uh, there's actually advertisement about that. So this scammer, either they set up their own account or they run other people's account. Okay, so they have basically they have a bank they can use. And then this, again, this CEO, uh, uh, the scammer impersonates a company executive or business uh, associate. Okay, so impersonate that boss. And then... The employee released the fund to scammer to the scammer's bank account, like that. So the scammer set up a bank account, and then the scammer impersonate the CEO asking for money, and then the employee released the fund to the scammer's bank account. Okay, which is quite common. Yeah. Uh, again, for business email compromise, they commonly use this type of email subjects, such as, for example, request for uh, transfer. Uh, fund transfer uh, and then just plain transfer request or they make it uh, they make it uh, what do you call this um, they make it sound urgent yeah they there's this sense of urgency so they make you panic so they put their urgent or again they put transfer requests okay so for a business email compromise okay like I said uh, urgent email subject okay so that it grabs our attention and makes us panic and then the position of this email sender. So in this case, uh, the scammer decided to be the chief executive. And then spoon feed sender domain, all right? And of course, the body of the email asking for uh, amount of money. Again, uh, business email compromise is actually quite common among corporates here in Brunei uh, or companies. And it's actually, it happened. And even the, um, if I'm not mistaken, the police, uh, local police, they have their own the Instagram, right? So they set out this um, re report uh, on their Instagram and saying that hasil uh, siasatan yang dijalankan oleh mendapati skim penipuan BEC telah cuba menipu beberapa syarikat yang ada di negara Brunei Darussalam. So actually, a lot of companies already became a victim of uh, BEC. Okay. 
So this is uh, the total dollars uh, lost by uh, uh, business email compromise. Uh, even though this number is from 2018, okay, uh, up until today, uh, it's, it's basically increasing. Huh? And even here in Brunei, last I heard, um, it costs around more than a million dollars. Like uh, if these companies com combine, uh, giving away to the scammers, it costs around more than a million dollars. So you need to be careful. Okay, so next one. Ah, here. So this is uh, not local, but uh, all over the world. Okay, so um, this is the the total amount of money lost to business email compromise. Yeah, so uh, that's a lot of money, basically. Uh, I can't even. Yeah. So um, the thing about business email compromises, when this person received the email, usually how they fell for it is because uh, the first email, it always asks for a small amount of number, okay? Uh, can you transfer $20 to this account? And then the second email, can you transfer $50? And then gradually like 200, 500, 1,000, up to can be like 100,000. So they don't ask for a lot of money uh, during the first try, they try, they ask for little amount of money first. So that's how a lot of people fell for it. Okay. All right. So here are hundreds of PEC scammers uh, arrested mostly from Nigeria and also the US. Uh, only 3.7 million recovered. Okay. That's not a lot of money. <laughs> okay. If you mentioned, uh, if you saw the previous slide, it's actually more than 3.7 million, yeah? So I'm going to share you email security tips. So of course, do not click on any suspicious link. Uh, scale e scan email, email attachments before you open them because like I mentioned earlier, email atten attachments, uh, they can contain malware. And then, okay, of course, be sure the person you are commu communicating with Okay, for example, like uh, especially BEC, okay? No, the only way to cure, to find the cure to BEC is actually by confirming with the person itself, okay? Let's say you receive money from the CEO, okay, uh, sorry, you receive email from the CEO, give the CEO a call, like, are you sure, uh, were you the one who emailed me asking me to transfer this amount of money? So make sure you, you need to make sure uh, of the person you are communicating with. Okay, and then of course you need to protect your personal information. So especially through email, okay, banks. Sometimes there's a phishing email, pretending to be banks asking for our address or username or password, right? So by right, banks do not ask for our username and password, especially through email. Okay, so protect your personal information. Of course, again, uh, run antivirus and also anti spyware. Okay, and make sure they are updated uh, regularly. And then email another email security tips. Um, uh, again, uh, operating system and software, make sure it's up to date. Uh, keep backups of your important data. Uh, don't copy and run software from untrusted sources. Uh, change, uh, create secure passwords uh, and change them regularly. Like I mentioned earlier, passphrase is the latest um, is, is the latest recommended method to create password, yeah? Uh, if you want to know more about passphrase, you can go to uh, YouTube and learn about passphrase uh, in one of our previous webinars. And then if in doubt, uh, especially uh, this one, uh, when it comes to business email compromise related, yeah? When in doubt, refer to your IT department. Okay. So I'm sharing you tips of, uh, for a cybersecure experience. Oh, sorry, so for a secure cyber experience. Okay, uh, first and foremost, uh, if you were to install uh, software or applications, make sure they are genuine. Okay, make sure you download from trust, trusted sources or a legitimate website or official website. Um, for applications, you, the ones for your phones, uh, download from App Store or Google Play and avoid third-party stores or website. And then the benefits of using genuine software attacks, uh, software and apps, uh, it reduces of malware attack, 
and it avoid data leakage, okay? And then, of course, don't forget to update your uh, software and also operating system, all right? Uh, the importance of uh, software updates is that uh, it will uh, equip you with the latest features and protect you from the latest security threats. It will fix bugs and also protect your data. And of course, uh, don't forget uh, antivirus. Um, this is a common question, actually. Uh, 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 well, the benefits of installing antivirus is basically they can stand, scan your devices for malware. Even on your phone, yeah, people always uh, install antivirus on their computer. They kept on forgetting to install antivirus on their phone. Okay, so uh, also protect you from the latest security threats and alert you to any cybersecurity related problems, okay? And of course, the most common question is, uh, what kind of antivirus should I buy? Okay, uh, it's actually up to you, okay, depending on how you use it, okay? But however, uh, what we recommend is that, uh, you download, down, download uh, your antivirus from a legitimate website or app store, I know some people, for, for some reason, they download their antivirus from Torrent, which I don't know if that can be trusted or not. Yeah? <laughs> and then uh, if you want to download antivirus, make sure it is well-known and repeatable. And make sure it has high ratings and good reviews. And uh, some people, they have antivirus, but they don't update it frequently. Okay, Whenever there's a notification asking, like, update antivirus, they just ignore it but it's, it's better for you to update your antivirus, yeah? So that they can recognize the, rate, the latest threats. Okay, so what can you report to Brewster? We're almost towards the end of the presentation, yeah, webinar. Okay, the first one is you can report about infected computer. Like I mentioned earlier, uh, infected computer by malware or spyware or even ransomware, okay? Uh, you can even uh, report about malicious website, uh, hack email account, uh, phishing, okay? Uh, you can even report about business email compromise. Uh, you can even report about social media, usually like uh, unwanted contacts, uh, hack accounts, online impersonation, social media scam, uh, sextortion. Uh, sextortion, by the way, for your information, we have been receiving a lot of um, calls a few weeks ago, actually, we received a lot of uh, calls about sextortion, especially on Facebook, okay? So be careful. So uh, yes, you can report that. Uh, another one is that uh, you can, this is normally for kids, but also for, for adults, we still entertain them, right? Okay, so uh, cyberbullying, yeah, you can report that as well. Uh, website deface, defacement and denial of service attacks. And then, of course, um, uh, if you want to report the cybersecurity incident, um, you can email it to us, reporting at brucet.org.dn. You can even call us. It's 24-7, all right? It's at 245-8001. And then you can even WhatsApp us. Let's say, for example, you have a screenshot you want to show, you want to share with us. Uh, you can even WhatsApp us. The seven one seven zero seven six six. So all these is actually twenty four seven. Okay, uh, some people they they call us time super super they call us, uh, but we still entertain them. However, some uh, the question can be like printer uh, kurusak tu. So <laughs> that one is actually out of our scope lah. Huh? We entertain uh, cybersecurity related incident punya reports saja. <laughs> right. 